A very good evening and a warm welcome to UBC News tonight. It is the 15th day of July 2021. I'm Lorene Masika Kazimoto and Elizabeth Nakakoni on sign language. We start off with our first headline story this evening. Kilembe Mines has again been a victim of River Nyamwamba flood bus that flipped over its banks, affecting Kilembe Mines and the many hydropower stations, though no death was registered. This time round, there was no community along the river banks that were affected since uh, many of the families had been relocated to internal, internally displaced people's transit camps in areas of Mohocha and Kanyangea at the plain lands of Mount Renzori adjacent to Queen Elizabeth National Park. Now in this report, we tell that Nyamwamba River for over 10 years has been busting catastrophic disasters, displacing communities and destroying public and private properties evaluated in billions of shillings. Let's have the report. The river has since 2013 destroyed property and government infrastructure worth billions of shillings. It's unusual to see River Nyamwamba flooding in a dry spell. This morning, River Nyamwamba took residents of Kasesa municipality to another raid of surprise. In the Nyamamba Valley, the river had to burst again. Thanks to God, it didn't claim any life. For many of the communities that would be victims in the recurrent floods had been relocated to IDP transit camps in Mukhoye and Kanyangea at the plain lands of Queen Elizabeth National Park after the previous incidents in 2019. Despite of the damage again caused, the LC3 chairperson of Lembea division and the locals here still fault government about the continued occurrence of the river busting. However, to Bomera, the need to deslit the river is now timely right from its source in the Renzori Mountains. The situation of the people who are affected is bad. For example, even now, some people are still living in the camps. They are there. You go to Kanyangea, people left their homes, clothes. They are there, they are living in the camps. So as they are suffering in the camps, these people who are here are also suffering. So people have no life now. If government relocates them to a safer place, they will live and go there. Like it has done to other places. You saw what happened in Bududa. Government has bought land for the people of Bududa. They have settled them in Chiriandongo. So our people still here need a relocation program. A lot of projects, including the Nyamamba Hydropower second phase, have been swept, including houses that were constructed by residents along River Nyamamba River Channel, though no longer habitable. The project engineer at this site says several damages have been caused by floods. This leaves them with no option but to have a work plan to start after the river floods. Working on a uh, boat project up upstream. Uh, number two uh, is under construction, and number one is uh, a running uh, a running plan. Uh, the both are both are very safe, uh, but uh, we are having some damages. Yes. However, in Kasese municipality, the challenge is beyond the capacity of the municipality leadership. As more people get displaced today, hundreds are still in Mohocha transit camp, faithfully waiting to be given a permanent settlement. Meanwhile, reports so far indicate no casualties and death. Over 40 families have been left homeless at Masese village in Jinja district after a blazing fire burnt the homesteads to ashes and destroying properties worth millions of shillings. Police in Jinja is investigating the root cause of the fire. However, natives in the interim have told investigators that the fire outbreak started at 7.30 p.m. on Wednesday night. We have the details. 
The difficulty of determining whether arson has occurred arises because fire often destroys the key evidence of its origin. Many fires are caused by defective equipment such as sorting of faulty electrical circuits. What remains a hard nut for investigators to crack here at Masese village in Jinja district is whether the fire outbreak involved many irrigation sources and fuel. But this will require police investigators with expertise in fire chemistry to investigate the incident. <laughs> Police firefighters here in the interim are attributing the fire outbreak to a charcoal stove that was burning in one of the kitchens of a resident. However, police firefighters managed to reach on time to put off the fast moving fires that had burnt over 40 homes nearly to ashes. <laughs> Speaking to eyewitnesses, residents here made attempts to put up the blazing fires, but their efforts were made. An estimated number of families left homeless is 40, but subject to verification by police and the district disaster and relief department. <laughs> Most affected here since last night are mothers with their little babies who are prone to contracting pneumonia due to night coldness. However, those affected by the fire have expressed dismay over government failure to support the needy. The other categories of affected persons are those who were living in wooden temporarily makeshifts as well as iron sheets sheltered houses. <laughs> Government <laughs> Very tragic indeed. Now, Uganda has started registering a gentle downtrend in the current COVID-19 upsurge. Currently, active cases at health facilities stand at 853, with a positivity rate of 8.2%. These numbers pale in comp comparison with those which were registered in early June 2021, up to the lockdown. Samuel Senono reports. Semogere Francis is a florist along Bomb Road in Kampala, and this is a business he has been engaged in for the last 10 years. He says they have never experienced a surge in demand for funeral bouquets and wreaths like they did in the days leading up to the recent lockdown. If you passed here a week or even days after the lockdown was reinstated, you would see an influx of uh, funeral service vehicles all over the place. Yes, not only funeral service vehicles or even ambulances carrying dead bodies here and there. Eh? 
that is five days after the lockdown was reinstated the numbers were high our sales were high our sales in terms of our funeral wreath at least 10 families would buy flowers on a daily basis. The increased demand so many open up makeshift flower stores in order to make a living from this business, which was booming for a tragic reason. However, Simogrede says the demand for REITs has now decreased. I think because of the lockdown, and given that we don't uh, congregate in numbers, the numbers have reduced. Here you can see, you can even witness the street is empty, there are no vehicles here and there, there is no congestion of people, there is no jam. That must have impacted the, the, the spread of the virus in a positive way. That's why we see a reduction in our sales as well. When you compare uh, the sales of then and now, you would see You've been here at least for some time. You can even witness. You can hardly make a sale of a wreath. This has been attested to by the Minister of Health, Dr. Jen Ruther Cheng. She, however, cautions the general public against complacency. However, I want to caution Ugandans not to, to get excited about this gentle downward trend and forget that COVID-19 is still with us and that there is a possibility of getting a new variant into the country because travel is not prohibited. And even when people travel and test negative, you're not sure whether they will not turn positive in a few days' time. So the caution here is that we all must remain active in following the standard operating procedures. Aching ants that they are looking at systematic ways of opening up the economy while emphasizing vaccination. Back at Bombo Road, this wreath is being prepared for delivery. We also told that many who couldn't attend funerals because of the restrictions on gatherings have been placing wreath orders as a way of showing love to the families of the departed. Samuel Senono, UBC News. Norwegian government has extended financial support worth 8 billion Uganda shillings to the World Health Organization to improve COVID-19 vaccine coverage and also its intake in the country. Now, as Zahara Abigaba reports, the project intends to support the vaccination of at least 60% of the high-risk population eligible for vaccination. The Norwegian government has signed an agreement with the World Health Organization worth 8 billion shillings to improve COVID-19 vaccine coverage and its rollout in the country. It has given 80 billion Ugandan shillings which comes to about 20 million Norwegian krona or uh, over 2.4 million dollars. This will, of course our need is far more bigger than this but for the vaccines we are going to have next week which is also supported by Norway's dose sharing and the one which follows with with the uh, another batch which we expect would be from other dose sharing which would be about another million doses this funding will make sure that that reaches the pub the public in time and uh, let me also mention since we are here today that Next week, probably next week, Norway is also providing uh, 285,600 additional vaccines through the COVAX cooperation to Uganda. According to the agreement, World Health Organization will work with the Minister of Health for the specified project time of 12 months. And to date, only 17.5 of these vulnerable people have been vaccinated. However, many of you will also realize that with this second wave, the pattern of vulnerability changed. And many of the youthful people under 40 years of age have been infected and many have succumbed to the virus as well. Meaning that everybody in Uganda at least above 18 years needs to get vaccinated.
Dr. Cheng says that there are many molecules of COVID-19 vaccines on the market. Zeneca, both COVID Shield and the Vaxzevria. Johnson and Johnson, Pfizer, Moderna, Sputnik Light, Sputnik, Sinovac, Sinopharm. Those are some of the vaccines that we can have in Uganda. The World Health Organization has only recommended the mixing of AstraZeneca and Pfizer. The others, research is still ongoing. However, because we need to vaccinate the population, whatever vaccine we get, we shall bring it in. The minister also said that Uganda National Medical Stores has the capacity to store vaccines at a very low temperatures like Pfizer and Moderna. Capacity to store vaccines at very low temperatures. Vaccines like Moderna, like Pfizer, can be stored. We don't have that capacity in the districts. But it doesn't mean we cannot use the vaccines. When the vaccines come in and at, uh, at the national medical stores, we can carry out outreaches. Move out, vaccinate people, two, three, five days, bring the vaccines back to national medical stores if they are not used up. Geographically, map out the areas and say if this area here is going to receive Pfizer, then we know the group of people. And then another area can receive another one. So that we avoid mixing because research has not yet given us all that evidence except for AstraZeneca and Pfizer. But because we need to vaccinate, we are not going to say no to any vaccine that is available. Because right now, there is a high global demand and we also need to vaccinate our people and open up the economy. So if we are rigid in accepting what is available, then we will not meet our targets of vaccinating them. The Minister of Health re-echoed the challenge of African countries accessing COVID-19 vaccines, citing global demand. The challenge is that there is a high global demand for vaccination and the production does not meet the demand and therefore it is extremely difficult to access vaccines even when you have the money. And so I continue to appeal to Her Excellency, even when you have contributed, you also need to help us pursue and get access to the vaccines. The country rolled out the COVID-19 vaccination in all 146 districts, municipalities including cities, on March 10, 2021. Overall goal is to prevent, reduce severe COVID-19 diseases and deaths. Zahara Abigaba, UBC News. UBC News tonight takes a short breather, but we'll return with more stories. Keep it locked. As the financial year 2020-2021 draws to an end, URA has put measures in place to facilitate taxpayers to file their returns and pay taxes within the set deadline. All our offices across the country and the URA contact center shall remain open to provide extra support to our esteemed taxpayers. Additionally, we have extended our contact center service hours from 8 a.m. to 11 p.m., Monday to Friday, and from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Saturdays and public holidays. In light of the COVID-19 risks, we encourage taxpayers to reach us through our improved contact center and other online platforms instead of making physical visits to our offices. For online support, please reach us through our toll-free lines 0800-117-000 or 0800-217-000. Email services at ura.go.ug. Website ura.go.ug. Social media, Facebook, URA page, Twitter at URA Uganda. URA Customs Help Tool, help.ura.go.ug slash login. URA appreciates all taxpayers who have duly fulfilled their obligations. 
Stay safe and let us all observe the standard operating procedures to prevent further spread of the COVID-19 virus. Stay safe as we develop Uganda together. Uganda Revenue Authority. Developing Uganda together. We've cut and reduced our MTN Momo withdrawal rates. Now you can withdraw mobile money at the lowest rates. You also get MTN Century Points when you deposit, send and withdraw MTN Mobile Money. Visit our Momo agents countrywide and withdraw mobile money at our reduced rates from 1st May 2021. Everywhere you go, MTN. The Office of the Prime Minister, together with the National Planning Authority, will on Friday 16th July 2021 launch the National Development Plan Web-Based Monitoring and Evaluation System developed to provide timely progress assessment on the performance of the National Development Plan. This message is brought to you with support from the European Union. vaccinated now, observe social distancing, wear masks properly, sanitize or wash our hands with soap and water regularly. Together we can defeat this enemy. Universal Periodic Review, UPR, is a unique process under the United Nations. It involves peer review of the human rights records of all UN member states every four years. The ultimate aim of the UPR is to help improve on the human rights situation in all countries through technical assistance and cooperation. Uganda will be reviewed in January 2022. This is an opportunity to raise international advocacy on Uganda's human rights situation. The National Coalition of Human Rights Defenders Uganda is coordinating all CSOs to participate in the CSO alternative reporting process in liaison with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. For more information, email info at hrdcoalition.ug or call 0772 484 Airtel Uganda has the best and most affordable rates when it comes to withdrawing and sending money. Withdraw money for as low as 330 shillings up to a maximum of 12,500 shillings. Sending money is just as affordable as ever. Absolutely unbeatable. Use Airtel money on the most affordable network with the largest network of Airtel money branches in Uganda. Dial star 185 hash to get started. Airtel money, simple, secure, borderless. The Office of the Prime Minister, together with the National Planning Authority, will on Friday 16th July 2021 launch the National Development Plan Web-Based Monitoring and Evaluation System developed to provide timely progress assessment on the performance of the National Development Plan. This message is brought to you with support from the European Union. Welcome back from that break. And now into business. Uganda Revenue Authority has realized a deficit of 2.3 trillion Uganda shillings in its revenue performance of the year 2020-2021. The significant shortfall is attributed to the adverse effect of the COVID-19 pandemic to Uganda's economy. On the other hand, URA posted a revenue growth of 15% in comparison to 2019-2020 fiscal year. Details in this report. The Revenue Authority collected a net revenue of 19.2 trillion shillings in the last financial year and posted a revenue growth of 15% in comparison to 2019-2020 fiscal year. The revenue growth is attributed to, among others, debt recovery, implementation of the digital tracking system and the electronic fiscal receipting solution. The revenue was generated from the top four sectors. 
These are wholesale and retail trade, which had the biggest contribution that amounted to 5.783 trillion, approximately 29.4%. The manufacturing sector followed with a contribution of 4.46 trillion, approximately 22.7%. The information and communication sector contributed 2.059 trillion, which is approximately 10.5%. While 1.64 trillion, approximately 9.4% was generated from the financial and insurance service sector. However, URA was off target by about 2.3 trillion shillings. That this target was set and approved by Parliament before the impact of COVID-19. Therefore, the macroeconomic variables that affect revenue collection, such as the GDP growth, were projected at 6%, yet at the end of the financial year, the GDP growth was only 3% after the COVID-19 disruption. The revenue deficit is mainly attributed to the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic early last year. Pay as you earn was one of the tax heads that had a major shortfall of about 315 billion. Corporate tax collections were also below target by 240 billion shillings. Particularly revenue from accommodation and food services activities declined by 37.38%, the education sector by 10.35%. Art, entertainment and recreation by 31.39%. Meanwhile, the revenue body has launched its 30 years anniversary celebrations with unveiling two mobile bus offices and URA online television studios to support clients with education, registration, payments and other compliance services. Oh. Congratulations. These new initiatives are geared at enabling the revenue body to achieve its agenda of leveraging on technology to deliver Uganda's economic independence. Abdul Nasir Lubwama, UBC News. And into sports news, Thomas Batch, president of the International Olympic Committee, on Tuesday expressed expressed his confidence in the upcoming Tokyo Olympics, saying it will be secure and safe. Giving a short speech at the headquarters of the Tokyo Olympics Organizing Committee, Batch called on the Japanese people to have confidence in all the efforts they are undertaking to make these games for them secure and safe, with all the intensive, more strict COVID-19 countermeasures. This is his first public appearance since arriving in Tokyo last week. The pandemic postponed Olympics will be open in 10 days. Tokyo Metropolis has officially entered the fourth round of the state of emergency and it is scheduled to last until August 22nd, meaning, the, meaning that the opening ceremony on the July 23rd of the Olympic Games will be within the period of the state of emergency. All right, now UBC News Tonight has come to an end, but do join us for our second edition at 10 p.m. My name is Laureen Masika Kazimoto and Elizabeth Nakakoni. We will see you at 10. We'll leave you with our weather forecast for tomorrow with Kutessa Mili. Thanks for tuning in once again, Kutessa Mili, with your weather update. We are still having thunder showers in most parts of the country, though some few areas are still experiencing sunny intervals. We are seeing a maximum of 67.7 mm of rainfall across Chitugum. That is pretty much of rainfall. Kabalo is 22.8, Gulu is 22.4, Soto is 16.3, Masaka is the lowest of 14.
1.1 millimeters. This is due to the rainbow that has shifted back into our country, increased with the moist easterlies growing from the Indian Ocean towards our country, enhanced with the local infects, hence bringing us the weather that we're experiencing lately. Tomorrow morning, though, we expect to wake up with thunder showers most parts of the northern country, the eastern and across the lake shores, but from some few areas across Masindi and other areas like Mbarara and Kawali, I expect to have sunny intervals. After an hour, though, we expect a continuation of thunder showers mainly in northern part of our region and light showers across the lake shores, but a continuation of sunny intervals across Masindi and Kasese. Temperature rise up 26 degrees Celsius across the Karamoja region and around the lake shores, including our capital city Kampala, the lowest across Kavale with 23 degrees Celsius. You is moving out of our country, touring other cities around the globe. We are forecasting sunny conditions across Dubai with a maximum of 42 degrees Celsius. Hong Kong, New York, Johannesburg expect to have sunny heat hours with a maximum of 32 degrees Celsius across Hong Kong, but Mombasa is expected to have light showers. Thanks for tuning on UBC. I remain to family. Stay tuned and see you tomorrow. In efforts to improve quality assurance and Uganda's competitiveness as a tourist destination, Uganda Tourism Board is set to undertake a nationwide grading and classification exercise of hotel and accommodation facilities. As a member of the East African community, Uganda subscribes to the East African Grading and Classification Criteria, a system denoted by stars ranging from 1 to 5. The grading and classification exercise will be crowned by the awarding of star ratings to facilities found compliant to the EAC minimum standards. This is therefore a call to all accommodation and facility owners and managers to register and get licensed by UTB as a requirement and get ready for participation. For more information, visit www.utb.go.ug or email qualityassurance at utb.go.ug go.ug for details. Uganda Tourism Board, promoting tourism together. It's no secret that ICT makes learning easy. The strides made in our field couldn't be possible without it. And now we can watch our favorite show. Yeah. Ah, my radio is my best friend. UCC provides an enabling regulatory environment and policy guidance for healthy competition. We also facilitate ease of doing business in the communications sector through licensing, standardization, spectrum management, tariff regulation, rural communication development and consumer empowerment. An informed consumer is an empowered consumer. UCC supports local content and innovations. Driving the development of a robust communications sector in Uganda is Uganda Communications Commission. Airtel Uganda has the best and most affordable rates when it comes to withdrawing and sending money. Withdraw money for as low as 330 shillings up to a maximum of 12,500 shillings. Sending money is just as affordable as ever. Absolutely unbeatable. Use Airtel Money on the most affordable network with the largest network of Airtel Money branches in Uganda. Dial star 185 hash to get started. Airtel Money. Simple, secure, borderless. If we get vaccinated now, observe social distancing, wear a mask properly, sanitize or wash our hands with soap and water regularly. Together we can defeat this enemy.
Universal Periodic Review, UPR, is a unique process under the United Nations. It involves peer review of the human rights records of all UN member states every four years. The ultimate aim of the UPR is to help improve on the human rights situation in all countries through technical assistance and cooperation. Uganda will be reviewed in January 2022. This is an opportunity to raise international advocacy on Uganda's human rights situation. The National Coalition of Human Rights Defenders Uganda is coordinating all CSOs to participate in the CSO alternative reporting process in liaison with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. For more information, email info at hrdcoalition.ug or call 0772 484 We've cut and reduced our MTN Momo withdrawal rates. Now you can withdraw mobile money at the lowest rates. You also get MTN Central Points when you deposit, send and withdraw MTN Mobile Money. Visit our Momo agents countrywide and withdraw mobile money at our reduced rates from 1st May 2021. Everywhere you go, MTN. The Office of the Prime Minister, together with the National Planning Authority, will on Friday 16th July 2021 launch the National Development Plan Web-Based Monitoring and Evaluation System developed to provide timely progress assessment on the performance of the National Development Plan. This message is brought to you with support from the European Union. Well, this just in, breaking news, we have just received uh, the new list of, um, I would say, by virtue of the power given to the president by Article 174, Section 2 of the 1995 Constitution of the Republic of Uganda has appointed the following as... Uh, permanent secretaries and uh, number one is the head of public service and secretary to a cabinet that is Lucy Nachobe. Then we have the deputy head of public service and secretary to cabinet, Deborah Katramu. We also do have the state house controller as Jane Bareche. Then we have the principal private secretary to the president, Dr. Kenneth Omona. We have the principal private secretary to uh, His Excellency the Vice President Alex Kakoza and then office of the president is Keith Muhakaniza office of uh, the office of the Prime Minister, I beg your pardon, is Keith Muhakaniza, and then office of the President is Yunus Kakande. Then we do have the Ministry of Agriculture, Animal Industry and Fisheries as David Chomukama Kasura. And then we have the Ministry of Defense and Veteran Affairs as Rosette Viengoma. We have the Ministry, the Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Education and Sports is Kate Lamoro. And of the per Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Energy and Mineral Development, Batewe Irene. Now, moving on to the Ministry of Water and Environment, this is Alfred Okidi. And then the Ministry of Works and Transport is Bagea Waiswa. Now, the Permanent Secretary, the Secretary to the Judiciary, is uh, Pius Bijirimana, and then for the Health Health Service Commission is Mary T. Wenene. Now the Public Service Commission uh, perm Permanent Secretary is Dr. Godfrey Mbabazi, and uh, the Judicial Service Commission is Dr. Nasali Lukwago. Now for the Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovation, well it has been abolished and retired all right now moving on to the ministry of east african affairs uh, we see edith mwanje taking on this seat and uh, the ministry of ethics and integrity is alex o okello uh, the permanent secretary clerk to parliament is honorable adolf mwesije and uh 
Moving on to the Inspectorate of Government is Cafero Rose. And then finally, the Education Service Commission. Uh, this is taken on by Dr. Osman Lukwago. Now this, we shall be including them, of course, in our 10 o'clock bulletin. And this is breaking news, just as, just it, just, news just in. And uh, these are the permanent secretaries of the different ministries. devotion and the willingness to sacrifice for one's country i say no to corruption because i put my country first i choose peace over violence because i put my country first i love uganda i serve uganda i sacrifice for uganda i'm loyal to uganda i love myself be patriotic uganda first <laughs> This message is brought to you by the National Secretariat for Patriotism Co Uganda, Office of the President. Previously on the change. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm actually just entering home now. No, no. But that's been really hectic. Oh, sorry. That's the life of a medical doctor. <laughs> yeah. Have you had dinner? No, I really want you to get the treatment. Yes. Because if you don't get the treatment, I will not be happy. Like a woman. I feel great in my childhood area. In fact, I experienced unexpected vagina bleeding. But you seem to be 40, 40 years and above, right? What we have told you is going on. Aren't you dead? Would you be alright? Fainted because of exhaustion. In my view, there might be an underlying problem involved there. Cancer test. 
you are just laughing. No, I haven't. So you knew I have cancer. I'm scared. No. So you mean I'm going to die? that you're going out. Where are you? Casa Institute? To do what there? <laughs> My dear, treatise doesn't pay. Go for what you want. Okay? I'm not in the moods for your unsolicited advice today. Okay? So if you don't mind, I'm going to work. Please. See you later. I didn't know that you were going to work. See you. See you too. I do. Yeah, I do. So, have you made sense of everything you read? Yes, Dr. But it's, it's the same as we explained earlier. Yes. So, What's your decision? Uh, not yet. I've not yet taken any decision, but uh, I think this is a uh, urethral, supposedly injection mm -hmm. uh, treatment. 
uh, can have also its uh, side effects uh, and the uh, pains and whatever. Again, it will affect even my wife with the plans and 